Anchors up. Sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Austin? Austin. Hi, Jared. I'm, yeah, that's me. Uh, I'm doing great. Thank you for having me, I guess. Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you for being a part of the community for so long. Um, everyone, this is Austin. Uh, he's uh, one of our most tenured fans. Uh, Austin, Austin is um, a mod in our Discord server. Um, if you're thinking, oh, Austin, that sounds kind of he he's the one that writes our over unders for us. That's Austin's over unders. This is the titular Austin. Um, yeah, so I was uh, Kyle's on vacation. I was looking for uh, someone to step in. Austin has podcast experience. Um, Austin is always uh, like during our social screens and stuff like that, always very chatty. Um, so I kind of figured he'd be up for it. Lots of opinion, very opinionated. That yes. that one can go either I direction. At some point, yeah. That being opinion, it can go in one direction or the other. But uh, you know, I'm I'm in a glass house, so I'm not going to throw bricks on that one. Okay. So Austin, um, do you want to just jump into it? Um, yeah, Arkansas let's, uh, let's State. Yeah. Ohio State. Ohio State wins forty-five to twelve. Um, we'll get into grading. We'll get into grading the the different position groups, all the different aspects of the game. Um, but before we do that, do you just have any general thoughts about the game concerns or um, things you're happy about, things you're worried about? Yeah, Zach's right. I should grade the over-unders as well. Almost all the unders hit. There was one over, um, but that was pretty much about it. Didn't all um, the other hit, all the unders hit last week yeah. too? All of the unders hit last week. So there's only been one over. So maybe I need to reevaluate some of those. But I think it's just that there's been so little offense compared to what we thought that there would be. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, 42, 40, 45 points is a lot. But I mean, Ohio State didn't score any points in the fourth quarter. Um, yeah. At halftime, they only had only had 24. And so, you know, they came out and had that explosive third quarter, scored 21. I think the most jarring thing to me is that over two games, Ohio State has committed 16 penalties. And that yeah. just feels like a lot. I mean, you commit seven against Notre Dame. Okay. That's somewhat reasonable, but you commit nine against Arkansas state. I mean, there's gotta be something that needs to be fixed there. Whether, and it wasn't like it was just offensive linemen or it was just um, corners or it was, it was a mixture of all of those things. Um, so I think that's probably my biggest takeaway from the game. Um, there's obviously some other things too, but um, time of possession, obviously whenever you score quicker, you're going to have some, right you're gonna have less time of possession because you're just getting the ball down the field. And, but you know, close to 40 minutes of time of possession for Arkansas state, they had some sustained drives, even though a lot of those get stalled out with field goals and they end up not being able to score a touchdown. Um, you know, 37 and a half minutes of possession is a lot. Right. And as you said, when Ohio state scored, they tend to score quickly. So, you know, you take that with a grain of salt to, to some, uh, to some respect, but I would say one of the things that I don't feel great about is the fact that, you know, as far as time of possession goes, Ohio State only five for 11 on third down against a, yeah. a lesser opponent. Let's call it like it is against the lesser opponent. I don't think five for 11 on third down is acceptable. Um, they did hold Arkansas State five to 20 on third down, which is good. Um but they also gifted a lot of first downs as far as penalties, the penalties go. You yep. you cannot jump over other players on a punter regardless. <laughs> You're not allowed to do that. That that should be a thing that you know. Um, I appreciate the effort, but yeah. Yeah, and and like there were a lot of offsides penalties and honestly, like I like that the defense is being more aggressive, like much more aggressive and I think an occasional offsides is going to be a product of a more aggressive defense. Um, was it four by the end of the game? Four is too many. Yeah. Um, I, I think part of part of what um, what Gangland just said in the chat as well that we should be hitting around seventy five percent on third down. In some ways, that goes back to C.J. Stroud, right? He was sixteen of twenty four, so that's about sixty six percent completion. Obviously, not all of those are on third down, but you know we were looking at this season for him to be like, hey, you need to complete around seventy five percent of your passes for this to be considered, you know, for you to take a jump. Last season, he committed, 
well over 60% of his passes. And so if he's going to make a jump, a lot of those third down throws, he needs to be able to make them. And I think a big part of that's going to be, and he's shown a little bit more willingness to do this this year than he did last year. And even more so against Notre Dame, but in this game, and I don't, I know that they were just trying to be vanilla and not trying to give too much away, but he didn't really get out of the pocket too much. I think he tried to rush the ball uh, a couple times on some scrambles, but um yeah, like we need to see CJ Stroud get out of the pocket a little bit, make something happen on third down. And I understand it's just Arkansas State. You'll probably hear this, us say that a couple of times, but the game still counts. And, you know, 45 points against Arkansas State might seem like a lot, but it really isn't enough. I mean, the spread was what, 45 and a half? So they didn't even score enough points no. to even cover the spread if they held them to zero. Uh, Austin asked, what was our average yards to go on third down? I, it would be a great stat if I had it. I don't have that. Um, what I can tell you, and something that I think, you know, and I'm not, I'm not excusing CJ Stroud. He could have been more efficient. Um, but I, I think some of this has to go to Ryan Day or Kevin Wilson or ultimately Ryan Day, really. Um, Henderson was running the ball at 87 or 8.7 yards an attempt and was only given the ball 10 times. Mayan Williams was still got was just shy of six yards per attempt. He was only given the ball eight times. Ride your horses. Yeah, and I mean I mean part of that is that they again had some pretty long touchdowns. I mean, I think there's a 50 yarder to Igbuka possibly, or even Marvin Harrison Jr. Obviously uh, had a great day on, on the field as well. And so when you have those long ones, it's a lot harder to, you know, end up with a running back that has 15, 20 carries, but you know, Williams and Henderson only 18 combined carries is it's, it's not enough. Uh, and I mean, it's not like Hayden came in and had a lot of reps at the end of the game to take away some of those carries. He had four carries running for 13 yards. And so a long of nine. So basically he had one rush for nine yards and, three for one a piece. And that was basically it. So it's not like he took away a lot of those carries either. We just chose not to run the ball very much. Yeah. Hayden got those carries when it didn't matter anymore. Like, you know, call it, call that as it, as it is as well. Um, that, that just didn't matter. Um, it was, they were literally just running out the clock. Uh, uh, Nomad says they should have 25 combined. Uh, that I think is a totally reasonable goal. Um, I think that's totally reasonable. I would say 20 should be bare minimum. I mean, they had 18, 20 should be bare minimum. I think 25. Yes, yeah, Stuart, I did skip yours. Um, the, <laughs> um, but those carries mean reps. So it matters. Um, yeah, yes and no. I mean, the game was over. I mean, again, part of it is that it is Arkansas State and they don't have they don't have to run the ball. Right. Again, I think against Notre Dame, it was well more than that. Um, you know, they obviously carried uh, Mayan Williams, obviously carried the the rock a lot against um, Notre Dame. And it wasn't necessary in this game. I'm trying to see exactly how many it was. Yeah. So they combined for 29 carries. So let's just call it 30 carries in the Notre Dame game. So they just just about doubled their production um, in the Notre Dame game versus this game. And it just wasn't necessary because they threw the ball much more. I mean, CJ Stroud in against Notre Dame threw for two twenty three, whereas in this game on less attempts and less completions, he threw for three fifty one. So not as necessary. Uh, yeah, I think that's totally fair. Um, also, like you're not getting as yeah, I mean, as as you point out, you're not getting as many yards per attempt, so you're just going to have right. to snap the ball more. Uh, so there is just going to be more in the way of, you know, touches and reps and everything. Um, Cause Stuart, Ohio Stuart State... does say Stuart does say that the, the game was a failure because we didn't get our backups until, until the late in the fourth. I don't necessarily agree with that, but go ahead, Jerry, we can get back to that. Yeah, no, um, I, I, I mean, I won't failure. Failure seems harsh. Um, I, disappointing. Cause I think I would have liked to have seen a full quarter of McCord and the other guys, um, and not even necessarily that I'd want to see them for a full quarter. I would rather we had just been in the position to do that. Um, and had there not been so many stupid penalties, I think you would have seen that. Um, and, and on the, you know, and we don't, we don't like to talk bad about individual players too much. Um, but, um, 
we're seeing some some early struggles from um from Burke. Yeah. Um would be curious as to why that's happening. Um he has seemed out of position a few times. Um so it's something to keep an eye on. Hopefully it's not something that keeps going. Um, but of the of the two corners, I think Brown's been playing better to this point. Um, Gangland does come through and say that the first team offense averaged about nine yards to go on third down. And that doesn't explain, obviously, a lot. Um, I think part of that is that early penalties and early downs definitely put them back. And so, you know, when they get their typical five, six yards on a first or second down play, that only makes it back to the line of scrimmage uh, from the beginning of the set of downs. So that obviously, yeah, and obviously off schedule plays as well, Gangland. Yeah, uh, I mean, here you know, the thing is, yards per play, yards per play, Ohio State had 10, averaging 10 mm -hmm. per play. Now, of course, that's an average, and it's thrown off by, you know, several really long plays, of course. Uh, but how are you, <laughs> how are you not scoring at least 21 points every single quarter when you're averaging 10 per play? And, and one and of the answers to that, that is State, stupid penalties. Yeah, Arkansas State's it's, as much as, you know, obviously a lot of people didn't take them seriously coming into the game. Their offense is actually pretty good as far yeah. as I believe in the Sun Belt. Their offense in the Sun Belt, they're going to be competitive in most of their games because their offense is going to carry them. Their defense was not the vaunted part of that. I mean, their defense was one of the worst in all of right. college football last year. So there's no reason why you shouldn't be putting up 21 points in every quarter. I mean, even, even though a lot of the backups came in towards the end of the fourth quarter, Ohio state scored no points in the fourth, your second and third stringer should be able to put up points on this defense. Yeah. Um, the, I'd say, uh, dur during know your enemy, we pointed this out. Like, I think people were real annoyed. Uh, one of their wide receivers had 10 catches. Blackman goes 20 good. for 34. A pretty good completion percentage. Now, granted, it was only 188 yards, so it was a lot of short stuff, right? It, it's not like they were bombing it deep. They did force a couple pass interference calls, but honestly, I thought the defense, if you don't think the play, defense played well, then I think maybe your expectations for the defense are too high at this point, because I thought the defense played very well. Again, because Arkansas State... Well, yeah, yeah. Bur Burke's we'll having that. his issues. Burke's having his issues. I'm, I'm not going to say otherwise on that. Um, but as a whole, the defense played very well because this defense, or excuse me, this Arkansas State offense, again, when Blackman was healthy last year, played, had a really nice passing game. A really, really nice passing game. Um, Blackman is a you know, incredibly talented quarterback. Um, he obviously didn't meet expectations at Florida state, but he's a Florida state level recruit. Um, so uh, yeah, it's, I, I think defensively Ohio state does exceptional in this game offense, sloppy uh, penalties overall sloppy, but let's uh, let's actually get into the grades. Yeah. One, one more quick thing. Um, before we get into the grades, Jared, just on that note, just to wrap that up, is that what a lot of people aren't understanding as well is that those 12 points that Arkansas State had off of all those field goals, last year they probably get two touchdowns off of that, at least out of those four. Yeah. So the sudden change defense and the defense after an explosive play that would normally have given up a touchdown last year gave up four field goals, and I think we can, we can live with that. Yeah, uh, that's totally true. One of those field goals was gift-wrapped because of a muffed punt. Um, yeah, it's, and, uh, what, I think the first field goal was like off of two straight, uh, pass interference calls. Uh, if I remember correctly, although maybe I think one of those was actually waved off if I, I again, but yeah. So Can't yeah, it was, it was, it was largely penalties and mistakes. It was largely very gift wrapped from Ohio state. All right, Jared, let's get into these grades. All right. Um, coaching overall. The the penalties are really bringing this down for me. Um, I feel like I can't necessarily give this specifically to the offense or the defense. Um, and 
you know, if you really look at the statistics for every, every uh, player on the team, the statistics aren't that bad offense or defense. And so there's gotta be some sort of reason why you probably didn't score as much as you should have. So coaching was still, it was still good. It wasn't great. I'm going to go C plus. Uh, yeah. Stuart said B minus down in the chat. Um, I fair. think that's probably also fair. Um, yeah. Uh, B minus, I think is fair. B minus C plus either one. Sure. Um, offensive coaching specifically. Um, I'm going to have to go a little bit lower on this, mostly because again, uh, I think they got away from, I think they got away from running the ball and they shouldn't get away from running the ball. Um, so, but you know, it's still, they score 45 points. They still have like 10 yards per play. So that's still really, really good. Marvin Harrison Jr. lit the entire field on fire. How do how yeah, we got this did. far without mentioning his name? I don't know. That's a <laughs> that's a failure on our part. That's we'll, take a, yep. we'll, we'll take we'll 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 dox our own grade on that one. Um, so, but I overall because like I don't know if you put the penalty specifically on the offensive. I think like we we downgraded the grades for coaching. I think as a general for penalties. If you look at all the numbers, um, they still had a pretty good game. Uh, so I think I'm going to give them probably a B plus. Yeah, I I think I'm actually going to go B minus for them. And I, I almost wanted to make it lower for, for a couple reasons. And the first is that CJ Stroud threw 24 times in this game. Against Arkansas State, that's not really necessary. Uh, you know, if, even if you wanted to put McCord in there just to get more reps, you could have done that even if it was you know, earlier in the game, even when the game was, I guess, if you want to call it in question, even though really the game was never actually in question. Um, so that that's part of it. And then also, if you look at this, the wide receiver stats, and we'll, we'll get to that about how the wide receivers played overall, but there were only five Ohio State players with a reception in this game. That feels so wow. criminal to me. Um, whenever there's some younger guys that you're trying to get reps to, you're trying to, you know, get some chemistry between not just McCord, but you know, if one of our receivers happens to go down or something like that with all these five star and four star talents that we have in the room, they didn't get rotated in as much. So I, I almost want to give them a B or a B plus, but I, I I'm going to set it right at a B minus just because we did still end up scoring 45 points. Yeah, actually that's really fair. Cause you, you say that only three of those players were actually wide receivers. Right. Uh, yeah, Dallin Hayden got another, got a reception and Kate Stover, right? Kate Sover and Mayan Williams. Yeah. Yeah. Only Harrison, Abuka and Johnson of the wide receivers actually got a catch. Yeah. And it, with all the talent in that room, that just feels criminal in a game against a team from the Sun Belt. No disrespect to Arkansas State, but I, I think that's fair. And speaking of CJ Stroud, what, yeah. what do you grade him, Kyle? Did you just gotcha. call me Kyle? <laughs> and, yeah, and that, yeah, I just I felt like you in that moment. Okay, fair, fair enough. Um, the <laughs> uh, by the way, we want to see uh, grades in the chat too. So when we uh, when we, we ask, yes. we want to see your grades as well. Um, quarterback, uh, I I thought Stroud played fine. I didn't think he played great per se. I think he's still trying to find his rhythm with wide receivers who aren't Marvin Harrison. Uh, I think he and Marvin Harrison are doing well. Um, I think that uh, I think once uh, uh, I almost called him KJ Hill again. I don't know why I keep doing that. Um, it's, a, it's a KJ Hill vibe, really. Yeah, it really is. I think it's the three initial thing. Uh, once JSN is back, I think that's going to fix a lot. Um, no he's going to need to well. get his rhythm down. Um, and I assume he's probably has a better rhythm with, with Fleming, even if we haven't necessarily seen that in on the field a lot, there's been a lot of practice there. Um, so I'm going to, uh, I'm going to give him the benefit, benefit of the doubt on this one. As long as he can like clean up his rhythm with like a Mecca Buka. And I, and I know some of those passes look like a Mecca Buka misread it. And on a couple occasions, he probably should have sat when, but then he ran a drag or he should have drug when, and then he sat down. So I'm, I'm not putting that on, on Stroud. 
Um, I'm still going to give him like an A minus in this game. That's that feels fair. I mean, like you said, a lot of those things are just well, a couple things is that Egbuka still just a true sophomore, right? Second year in the in the in the scheme and in the, in the system and in college football right. in general. And so right. it right takes shirt, a sophomore. Oh, is he? Okay, so third year, but it's second year really getting playing time. I mean, he's yeah. it takes some time to go out there, read a defense, and you know, typically in high school, it's like, hey, go out there, run past all those guys, and we're gonna throw you the ball and you're gonna catch it. Whereas now it's like, hey, you need to read what the inside linebacker is doing and whether or not you need to sit down here, or you need to finish your drag. And so like you said, it's not necessarily on CJ. As far as CJ goes, I'm actually going to give him just a flat A. I thought he played really well. Um, 66% completion needs to be a little bit higher. Um, again, I want him to hit 75% this year. I know that's a pretty lofty goal, but I think he's the best quarterback in the country. And so if you're the best quarterback in the country, you should be able to hit a rate around there. Um, don't want to give him an A plus because it wasn't necessarily a perfect game from him. And I also want to see him... I really want to see him outside of the pocket more. I know that he's not a runner, but you don't have to be a runner to be a guy that can get outside of the pocket and throw the ball. Right. Uh, 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 you said, uh, Gangland says mm-hmm. Ibuka is a second year guy. I thought we were talking about Stroud. I was talking about Ibuka, but it's okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ibuka is a second year player. Yeah. Okay. That uh, I, we were talking about two separate people. And by the way, as far yeah. as, um, Stroud being a third year player, it's really worth mentioning that his first year was 2020, a game in which Ohio which, State barely played. They had very limited practice. So we say he's a third year player. It's it's two and a half at best. <laughs> yeah, the half is is debatable for sure. Yeah, I, I think I'm rounding up on the half. Uh, all right, Jared, offensive line, what do you got? Um, I thought the offensive line played well. They weren't the one causing the penalties this time around. They were against Notre Dame. Uh, we didn't have a ton of false starts this time around. Um, the rushing had a really nice average, um, 6.5 yards per rush. Um, and again, a lot of that got drugged down elsewhere as the running backs had 8.7 and 5.8, um, uh, only one CJ Stroud sack. Uh, I think did they get McCord once as well? No, it was it was just the one sack. Okay, only one sack. Yep. Um, and f- you know we talked about this in Know Your Enemy. They have a couple like really nice uh, defensive linemen transferred from Tennessee. Again, so like you know SEC level recruits. Um, so it's um. It wasn't a total like Sunbelt defensive line. I thought they played well. Only one sack. Nice run average. I have no complaints about the offensive line uh, whatsoever. They got good push at times. Uh, they didn't always get the push that they wanted, but I, 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 I you know, I'm, I'm going to go a I'm not going to give them a plus, but I think they deserve an A. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty much right there with you. I'm going to give them an A as well. Um, I always like to at least give them one sack to work with phrasing um one one i feel like it is manageable and okay for pretty much every game because there might be one fluke play or maybe a, you know the other team's allowed to play football too and so if they get into the backfield you kind of just have to deal with it and besides that i feel like they, the run blocking was very good like you said they averaged you know up to eight yards to carry and 10 yards per play on um throughout the game and so a i feel like it's fair it wasn't an outstanding game from them i didn't really see a lot of really large mistakes. Donovan Jackson definitely grew a lot in this game. Um, You know, they they say during a season that you grow the most from game one to two. And I definitely saw that in the offensive line would have loved to have seen that more in some other positions, but we'll get to those as well. Oh, chat. What do you think of the offensive line? I think Zach gave the offensive line a minus, which I feel like is, it's about fail. About fair. Yeah, it's about fair. Uh, Running backs. Um, Moving on to running backs, I thought they played really well. They saw the field well. Um, you know, Dallin Hayden came in a little bit later in the game and looked looked like a true freshman for sure. But you know, yeah. got to got to come in and get some reps. The fact that they are so thin at running back obviously hurts it. But Mayan Williams and Travion Henderson are looking like a true uh, thunder and lightning type duo. Um, I thought they ran really well. Mayan Williams runs really hard. 
He yeah. runs very, very hard. He's, he's the closest thing. I think we talked about this during our social screening that we have, um, on our discord. Um, that's discord.thesloopcast.com in case you're wondering. Always be um, plugging. He's always be plugging. Yes. If you would like to come join us, please do. And it's not even my discord. So, and I'm still <laughs> uh, plugging it. So please join. Um, but during our social screen, I think we even we even talked about that, that he's probably the closest thing we've had to a power back since the hide ish somewhere in there. And so, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, it's a lot of people said, well, what about, you know, Master Teague and Master Teague was like trying to be a power back in some ways, but we just get kind of tripped up. And so regardless of that, um, he's looked really good so far this season. And so um, I, I think I'll give the running backs a flat A as well. Yeah, I think that's totally fair. Um, the fact that they don't have an A plus is actually probably the fault of the coaches. Yeah, I would one hundred percent agree with that. Yeah. Wide receivers. All right, Jared. Everyone's favorite position: wide receivers. This one's tricky. I feel like because of the two guys that got the majority of the snaps, they played phenomenally. I would have just loved to have seen more guys. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, um, for sure. It, it's hard not to give a huge grade here simply because of Marvin mm-hmm. Harrison Jr. Seven receptions, 184 yards, and three touchdowns. Uh, Emeka Abuka, four receptions, 118 yards, and a touchdown. Both of them averaging, uh, well, uh, yeah, t- over 26 per catch. Um, that's the good news. The bad news is those are basically the only two guys who saw real uh xavier johnson got a couple like underneath passes and kate stover had one really nice pass but he's not a wide receiver Mm -hmm. um i would so i mean it's it's hard to give them a bad grade um yeah because the two guys played exceptionally well over like over 100 yards marvin harrison jr records his second ever out of three games his second ever three (laughs) touchdown game He's so good. Um, so like I want to give them an A plus for those two guys, but I kind of want to downgrade it to an A because it was only those two guys, which is yeah. again the fault of the coaching more than it is the it, wide receivers. It feels unfair to those two guys, but at the same time, it's it's the wide receiver grade. It's not like it's I mean, kind of like what Zach's putting in the chat now, where Marvin Harrison Jr. A plus wide receiver C plus. It kind of does feel like that, but we're grading all of them in one. Um, so well, I'm I think that's unfair to Emeka Ibuka. <laughs> yeah, I think MHJ and Emeka Ibuka together probably deserve an A plus. Yes. Um, like I said, I'm going to go A minus. Um, yeah, and I mean it was literally just those those two with you know 11 catches and then. Um, Xavier Johnson with three underneath catches and then that was it for the receivers and so um, obviously with JSN coming back and Fleming coming back I think that'll help a lot I, I know they talked a lot during the offseason about how there's going to be a little bit more of a rotation you know you lose two guys that were the number you know 11 and 12 pick in the draft or 10 and 11 whatever it was you know basically two first round talents and you think okay well they're probably going to have much more of a rotation well not in this game against a very inferior opponent and so I, I would have loved to see more rotation. I think part of that will come back a little bit more once we do see Fleming and JSN come back because you can't leave Marvin Harrison Jr. and Egg Buka off the field too much now after what they've shown that they can do. 100%. Um, tight ends. Eh, I mean... It, I, the run blocking was good. Um, yeah. I think we saw... a several nice run blocks from the tight ends. Um, hey, look, Kyle's in the chat. Um, Hi, Kyle. He's not in the he's not in the call. Oh. Though. Hi, Kyle. Better. <laughs> there you go. Um, and but we, we did have a 35 yard reception for Cade Stover. So that's nice. nice. Um, but we also like, I don't know, it's the, the tight ends are the tight ends in Ohio State's offense. Yeah, as far it's really as disappointing. They, I want it. They feel a little invisible at times. I, I want it to be the year of the tight end every year, and it's just it just never is. I was like, oh, Jeremy That's Rucker, the joke though, past right? Two years, <laughs> it's going to be the year of the tight end, and it just it just isn't. Um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, it was a really nice play by Stover. It really was. But you know, I, Zach says Day hates tight ends. Well, apparently, so did no. Urban Meyer for the most part. So yeah, and and, uh, and Jim he, Trestle. Yeah, it's just it's Ohio State hates tight ends basically. Um, 
and it's not like the guys don't have talent. I mean, Jeremy Ruckert was more of your flex tight end that you kind of see more today. Stover, I, you know, wasn't even really a tight end. He just kind of is now. So, right. um, and he's good. Um, I, th- I think I've got to give the tight ends. I don't want to give them a C plus cause that just feels wrong. Cause they didn't do anything wrong. So I'm just going to give them a B minus. I feel like Zach then says John Cooper liked them. Well, well, he liked well, Ricky Dudley. Yeah. And he also oh. <laughs> didn't like, you know, winning as many games as the coaches after him. So yeah. Maybe One that's game part in of particular. It. Yeah. Don't yeah. Well, guys. If you feature the tight end, you lose to Michigan. It's just that simple. The, the stats don't lie. Yeah, it's this is definitely correlation equaling causation and nothing else. <laughs> Guys, what do you give the tight ends in the chat? Um, I think a B is fine by by my standards, I think is Ooh, they, were, they were oh, there. Oh. OK, a couple A's. Wow, this Fair is enough. weird. Normally, the chat's much meaner than than the host. I, w- I wonder why. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Blocking was an eight plus. That's that's true. The, the blocking has been really good. I mean, that's basically what the tight end has turned into in this offense anyways. It's just, hey, you're going to block most of the time. So if you leak out for a pass every so often and fool the defense, great. That's that's basically the, the Ohio State tight end. So and, and right. it's not that like, there's anything wrong with that, considering all the talent we have at receiver. So that we didn't throw to in this game. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm so thrown off by so little talking by Jared. He's being Austin, Austin's a little more forceful, I think. I am. Yeah, for sure. Defensive I, I, coaching. I, no, no. Yeah. Um, mm, what do you think? Um, I, I, I don't really have a lot in the way of complaints. Um, and, and let's, and again, like, I think we're putting the penalties specifically on like the coaching, coaching category, right? And maybe that's fair. Or maybe that's not fair, but I think that's where we deducted most of those points. Um, sure. again, uh, Blackman's a solid quarterback, way better than you would normally get at Arkansas state. Um, and you know, they hold them to, I'm trying to find the stat. This is why I'm talking slowly. Uh, they hold them to 3.6 yards per play. That's exceptional. That, that feels good. That does um, feel very good. And, and we also saw once again where the defense got even better in the second half. We actually have halftime adjustments from the defensive coaching room for once. Um, I'm I'm happy to pull it, put an A in there. Uh, Suncard said A minus pulled Burke when he got smoked. Yeah. Uh, they did pull. Burke. I mean, which which time? <laughs> that that's my biggest issue with the defensive coaching is that it, not necessarily that the scheme is bad. Obviously, Jim Knowles knows what he's doing, right? He definitely does. I mean, he turned Oklahoma State into a defensive juggernaut in the Big Twelve, no less, which is known as the No Defense League, and so that's you know got to mean something. However, Denzel Burke last year, as a true freshman, looked very good. And he has regressed. That is just the facts as of right now. Can he improve on the season? Absolutely. For sure. But he obviously has the talent to be a lockdown corner. So it would make you then assume that the scheme is putting him in bad positions. And that might not 100% be the case. Um, so I still want to give them a good grade. Like I'd probably still give them like a B plus. Um, but there needs to be something worked out because Denzel Burke has all the talent in the world to be the next Jeff Okuda, the next, you know, Sean Wade in the nickel, you know, the next really good Ohio State corner to come out of the university. But he's just having a tough time being isolated either in zone or on his island. Yeah. Um, and like even the field goal that they got in the second half, it was uh, still like a 45 yarder, um, a good kick. which is which is, I'm just saying is pretty far out there. It's not like they got down into the red zone on that one, um, you know, in the first, like I said, the, the first field goal was uh, off of some penalties. The second field goal was after a muffed punt. Um, and as you said, last year, those would be touchdowns. Absolutely. So I'm going to give I'm going to give them like a solid A, I think. That, that's fair as well. I'm, I, I don't disagree. It's just, I just I want to see something happen with Burke. For sure. But we, we can't we, we have a cornerback position to grade. So let's not. <laughs> we we can put that I'm gray, gray. There. thanks for asking yeah all right defensive ends um 
I thought the DNs played well. I mean, they they kept things inside for the most part. Um, yeah. Not that you know Arkansas State wanted to go out there a lot, anyways. If you try and go one on one with the, um, uh, with the skill level that we have, who counts as a DN? You know, the guys that line up in a DN. Do you want me to go really football on you, Sun Card? The guy that lines up in a five, a seven, or a nine outside of the tackle. If that <laughs> helps you at all. Yeah. Um, so I, and they didn't play outstanding. Um, they didn't play terrible i mean they, they played probably about as well as you could have asked them to i'm trying to see how many sacks did the dns have jared that's i don't uh i'm not sure they yeah, got on. any yeah, yeah they didn't have a single sack um that doesn't, the only necess- came from... no, that doesn't because, necessarily I mean, bother had... me no not really um they played well they did their job i think that this game plan and this this team was set up to where it wasn't a very stat heavy game for the dns but they still played well um, so I'll just go a flat, a flat B. Yeah, but there was a lot of f- passes that were forced quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, there were still a lot of hits caused on the quarterback. Um, uh, JTT has a tackle for a loss. Jack Sawyer has a tackle for a loss. So, I mean, they were still getting work done. It just doesn't always show up. It, like you, you don't have you don't hold a team to three point six yards per play without a pass rush no absolutely not Um, i think a part of that though and and when we talk about the d tackles it had a lot to do with them as well for sure but what do you what do you give the d ends jared i give them an a yeah i don't disagree a c plus nomad why why a c plus that feels extremely low yeah um zach said a b plus to an a yeah Um, i can i can get down with b plus to an a yeah split the difference in a minus maybe you're not, not impressed, impressed so far. I think you're wrong. Yeah, I think <laughs> like, I don't know and, else to yeah, say that. Go back and look at the first few drives as well and just watch JT. Yeah. Um, Tuimoloa, he was amazing the first few drives. I mean, just getting pressure, being in the quarterback's face, you know, blowing up plays, whether it be pushing a tackle back into the um into the box to disrupt a run play. Like he was he was very good. I'm kind of talking myself into like a B plus or an A minus now, thinking about how well JT played. Um but I'll, I'll stick with what I had. Uh, I, I mean, you you just don't always get there, Nomad. And if you force, like one of the reasons why the defensive tackles are getting sacks is because the quarterbacks are being forced to step up into the pocket. Mm-hmm. Um, that's being caught. And one of the reasons why the linebackers are getting there on inside blitzes is because the defensive ends are causing the tackles to immediately bail out wide. So now you're having the linebackers have lots of room to work with, you know, in between the tackle and the guard, you, the defensive ends can have an incredibly impactful game and have no set, no stats or sacks. Yeah. I mean, I think the defensive ends in this game, Nomad just wanted to set up the rest of the defense. I mean, if you you look at tackles for loss, there was quite a few tackles for loss. I think there's about 10 of them in this game for Ohio state. That is a very significant number. And you don't get that with other defensive ends for sure. Um, but D tackles, Jared, what do you have for the D tackles? My calls on his shit again. <laughs> I, yeah. don't know, I don't know how else yeah. to say it. Other than that, dude looks absolutely disrupt, just disruptful. You want to talk about a guy a, uh, who disrupts a defense. Michael Hall is a guy who disrupts a defense. We need a, uh, a emoji in the discord that just says hall pass with Mike Hall's face on it. I feel like that, you know, hall pass. could be, could be one. Hey, I like that. Always be branding as well. Someone, yeah, he's, someone, he's someone write that in creative for me, in the creative request for me, please. Thank you. What was <laughs> whose injury? No man. Uh, Mike Hall d- uh, did go off the field with an injury at one point. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he came back into the game, though. I'm pretty sure he did. Yeah, I, I don't think he yeah. went out. Yeah, he did. Okay. It was shoulder or eye or something. That's a very wide range. So I'm yeah. to thank you. I so, guess. Somewhere... Does that include Somewhere the trap? On his body. I don't know. Does that include the trap? Like, are we are we counting a region here? Maybe like an saying, ear. What, what maybe of, a jaw. What injury did he have? Somewhere on his body. Okay. It's Thanks. one That's of those. Really it's one of those hockey injuries. You ever read an injury report for a hockey game where it'll just say lower body? <laughs> Jeez. Um. So what what do you give those D tackles, Jared? Um, I mean, you, like you said, my call, but even, I mean, even if you look at Tyleek Williams yeah. also had a pretty decent for game. Sure. He ended up with uh, one and a half T, uh, TFLs as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one and a half tackles, uh, 
uh, for loss, two solo tackles, three total tackles. Yeah, the defensive tackles are as good as they've been at Ohio State in a very, very long time, depth considered. Depth considered, this is one of the best groups of defensive tackles ever. Because Ohio State's like five deep in impactful tackles right now. And I think part of it is that it's like Zach said, it's the TFLs and it's that it's the new breed of defensive tackle. I mean, if you, if you look at, if you watch the NFL, for instance, and you watch Aaron Donald, who came into the league as an end, he now lines up in a three. That's still a D tackle. Like Ohio state has tackles that are built like that guys right. that are lined up either in a three or even in a shade um, lined up over the center that aren't there. It's not like you have the 310 pound you know, bulky nose guard anymore. Like it's, it's guys that are athletic that can rush the passer that can get to the quarterback, but also still stop running plays. And I feel like Mike Hall and Tyler Williams both played a heck of a game and I'm actually going to give them an A plus. Uh, Sun cards says, wait, no mention of the freshman when talking about Ed's Curry, uh, Curry looked insane Fair. when the second stringers came in. Curry looked like he was shot out of a rocket. Uh, so yes, thank you. Sun card. That's a great mention. I just, I don't, I, we have not necessarily been bringing up the third or the second and third stringers a lot when talking about the, um, the, the they didn't play that for much. sure. Yeah. Uh, but no, absolutely. That's a, that's a great call out and it should be said. Thanks Sun card. Right. Sun card's trying really hard to get that guest spot next time. <laughs> what did you end up giving to the D tackles, Jane? Uh, uh, an A. An A. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. All right, my my favorite position at Ohio State, linebackers. Now, are you are you still going to be salty now that you have the microphone and the camera on you? Are you still going to be like all hateful and salty towards towards uh, Eichenberg? Uh, or is that I'll just chat? Go. Is that just chat, Austin? Is that I'll just like memeing? Uh, let, let me is, it, is is it just like memeing chat, Austin? Who is? Um, or is it podcast completely also? unfair to Tommy Eichenberg or are you going to take a more moderate stance now that you have a microphone and a camera? I'm going to plead the fifth and let you go first and uh, marinate on that for a moment and figure out how I want to feel in this very moment. <laughs> um, Chambers had an amazing game, uh, six tackles, four solo tackles, a tackle for a loss and a sack. Cody Simon. um Six tackles, four Two solo kills. tackles, two tackles for a loss. Um, the um, Tommy Eichenberg, five tackles, four solo tackles. Um, on he set up, I think it was Chambers on the sack that Chambers had because they did kind of a a, a, a block, they did a double like a gap linebacker blitz. Um, and it was nice. Eichenberg totally lit up the center, made sure Chambers had a clear path to the quarterback. Um, I think that the linebackers are playing well. I mean, of the of the four top tackle getters, uh, three of them are linebackers. Um, of those three linebackers, you have a combined three tackles for a loss, a combined um, 12 solo tackles. Uh, and a sack. I, I think the linebackers are playing very well right now. Yeah, so I, I give them I give them an A plus on this game. That's I think that's pretty fair, to be honest. Um, I think a big part of what is interesting, also just flat out great, is that if you look at the tackle numbers for Ohio State this year compared to last year, you see that there's a lot more solo tackles and it's I that might be coaching. It might be just like setting guys up like guys are just making tackles. Whereas last year, there's a lot of broken tackles. It felt like or a lot of arm tackles. Guys are wrapping up and making plays toughness. Yeah, Zach, all of that. Um, as far as the linebackers go, uh, I, I, again, as Jared has made very obvious, I'm not the biggest uh, Eichen Borland or Eichenberg, whatever you'd like to call him. Uh, Can't believe you fan. He, he, I will lament, he has gotten much better. He has been better this season. It was a very low bar. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> um, I, I'm still very scorned Salty. from the national championship game against Alabama. Um, and it really felt like Ohio State just replaced tough Borland with Tommy Eckenberg. But again, as Jared and I have talked about before, he wasn't put into very 
good situations for himself. Um, he hasn't been playing very well so far early this season. He has eaten up blocks for other guys to then go and make a play. Um, so I can appreciate that selflessness. Um, Steel Chambers, I still think, is the best linebacker on the team. But Steel yeah. Chambers can be the best linebacker on the team with yes. Tommy Eichenberg also playing well. Um, yes. Cody Simon as well. And I mean, in the, in this sort of scheme, you typically only see two linebackers on the field at a time anyways. And so seeing a good rotation of Simon, Chambers, and Eichenberg, um, I, I think Ohio State's set up really well this year for their linebackers to have a much better year than last year even with as low as a bar, um, I'll give them an A plus as well. Uh, specifically, because if you look at the run numbers as well for Arkansas State, they didn't run the ball very well. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the linebackers filling gaps and making tackles when they need to. So I'll, I'll give an A plus to the linebackers as well. Yeah, and like arm tackles are mentioned, right? And yeah. a lot of people say, oh, stop arm tackling. Well, no one, like, well, I don't say no one. <laughs> Most Hopefully people, not. most of the time, no one intends to arm tackle. An arm tackle is a thing you do out of desperation. That's not like a guy's going out there. Okay, sometimes it happens. Sometimes it happens. But for the most part, no one goes out there and thinks, I'm going to arm tackle today. Like you arm tackle because you're out of position. One of the reasons why you're seeing less arm tackles is because the defense is acting instead of reacting. Therefore, they're in better position to make plays. Therefore, they're in the position to wrap up the players, to deliver the hit instead of catching the players, instead of chasing the players. They're actually putting, being put in a position to make the impact instead of being impacted. That's why you're seeing less arm tackles. Mic drop. Mic Boom. drop. Oh, should, so someone can, can someone drop a clip this on that one? I think that was the Mike. clip. <laughs> yeah, that was the clip. Mike, we can hashtag Mike Hall drop that one. Thank you. Yeah, I'll be here. I'll, I'll be here for two days this week, not all week. Um, corners, Jared, a very hotly debated position. Nomad's got a bounce. He wants game. he wants you to know specifically. Good job, just for you. Yeah, he said. Well, never mind. You do my catchphrase. Um, Corners, Jared, corners. D, ooh, Zach, that is, that is brutal. Uh, an SMH from Gangland. I don't think that's a, I don't think that's a proper academic grade. Um, <laughs> Everyone but Denzel B. Yeah, Fair-ish. Um, yeah, Bur Burke had a bad game. We've already discussed it. We don't need to keep discussing it. Um, I have all the faith in the world yeah. that Burke's going to turn things around. Uh, he was out of position several times. He got burnt a couple times um he had a couple pass interference calls not a good game from denzel burke he didn't have a great game against notre dame either maybe he's still trying to figure out the defensive scheme maybe he's got an injury he's working through that we don't know about like we saw um we've seen that happen in the past with guys Plenty of guys um maybe there's something we're not aware of uh, but the fact of the matter is um He's been dealing with a hamstring gangland says. So well, maybe, maybe he needs a big part of it then. Maybe he needs some time then because he's, he's not playing well right now. And again, I have all the faith in the world that he is incredibly talented and that he will be back to being what he was as a freshman. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not trashing him. I'm saying I'm, I'm leaving the door open for some totally logical excuse or explanation as to why he's not playing well right now. Cause I've, I've seen him do it. I've seen him do it. I know you can do it. I've seen him do it. So I'm um, whatever there, whatever the reasoning is, because I'm sure there is one. There's a reason why he's not playing well. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that he's not playing well. And maybe the coaches shouldn't have him out there if he's not playing well. The uh, Rutgers is pretty solid this year. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in the next episode. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um he, but yeah, he, the fact of the matter is he didn't play well, but I thought uh, Brown played well. Um, some of the say or uh, rather corners who came in in relief because Burke didn't play the entire game. I thought so, took some bad angles um, on some on some passes in the flats. So overall, not a great game for the corners. Um, but it, again, Brown played well, but the opposite side, not so much. So um probably keep it a B minus and I'll keep it in the B's because Brown played well. B for Brown. B for Brown. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go C something for Burke. No, it's not the same, but um, 
I don't know. It's it, it's tough for me to give anything in the B range when you give up 10 catches and 105 yards to one receiver. I know they didn't get any touchdowns, so obviously that helps a lot. Um, but even two catches, 31 yards for the next receiver, one catch, 18 yards for the other one. I mean, they gave up a lot of chunk plays. Like it wasn't like it was just everything underneath. You know, 10 catches, 105 yards is a lot for one guy to get. And Champ Fleming's like credit to him. He played a great game. Like there's got to be credit given to the wide receiver as well. But and it um, also it should was... be noticed or noted that a lot of those were like fly, Touch just like passes. T- yeah, just like turn around and catch. You know, a lot of drags. Like it's not like they weren't all chunk plays. Uh, again, like right. their av- the average was not great. Yeah, and Fleming's I think only if it was just. Or no, sorry. That, if it was just rushing. the coverage, if it was just the coverage, it would be fine. But also, like the corner still have to make tackles when he gets out into space like that, and you don't get those chunks without that. So, like you said, not a terrible game from the corners. I think that they were fine. Um, so I, I give them a flat C. I, I don't want to give anything lower than that. Like C minus feels a little too harsh, but I feel like a sat a flat C is fair. Lemmings had a hundred and on those 10 catches, a hundred, he only had 105 yards and 58 of those were on a single play. Yeah. So the other nine catches, you know, 42 bar- yards or 47 yeah, yards, yeah. 47 yards. The, it tells you yeah. like what he was. Five yards a catch. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and that's incredibly low for a wide receiver to be getting five yards a catch. Yeah, it's just, I mean, if you look at their, if the top what, six, I guess, receivers for Arkansas State, like their longs were 58, 25, 18, 16, 11, 13. That just feels like a lot against a team like this. I know we said Arkansas State had a good offense, but, you know, I digress. It's, they, they played fine. They're going to play better next week, hopefully. We, we have a, we have a Kyle's corner submitted in the chat. Yes um safeties i think the safeties continue to play excellently i have no i have no notes yeah no uh yeah the this defense is built for safeties to play well uh they get an a for me yeah agreed like i I, again i have no notes i think they're playing great special teams finish it off jared hello hello can we go on this yeah you give up a 15 yard penalty on a stupid leaping penalty that you should know maybe that's the coach's fault i don't know maybe ohio state needs to have a dedicated special teams coach or something um (laughs) wait a minute (laughs) wait a minute um they they kicked one off out of bounds um they muffed a punt special teams are a disaster in this game i'll i'll say it the only thing that could have saved them and should have saved them and got our discord very hype was the punt return for a touchdown that ended up not counting um, because of the that, leap and a holding call. So it didn't it, happen because of it was, two penalties. Yeah. It was a heartbreak um, for all of us, mostly Kyle, um, who didn't even get a chance to watch it. So kind of kind of happy that it didn't happen. So Kyle didn't miss it, but also really annoyed because it would have been really cool to get our first punt return since Jalen Marshall. Um, so because it like kind of happened, I'll give them a D, but <laughs> beyond that, I would have given them an F personally. I'll, I'll, I'll split the diff and go D minus. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, an underscore. We're, we're going to get it, Kyle. This is, this is for you, Kyle. We're, we're going to get that part return touchdown this year. Mark my words. Like Mecca is going to go to the Mecca. Uh, Sun card says. Uh, there was a field goal. Yeah, a, a there, field goal. There was a field goal. There was yes. a field goal. So is, maybe that keeps it out of F. Maybe that keeps it out of F as well. I mean, after watching the Bengals and the Steelers, I guess we shouldn't talk down Can't getting complain. a field goal so yeah. much. <laughs> yeah, our, our kicker played much better than than those two kickers. So, all right, uh, Buckeye leaves. Offense, defense, wild card. Who do you got? Um, offense will... is obvious, right? Well, you're going. Are you going Marvin Harrison Jr.? I am. Yeah. And I'm yeah. Gonna... Uh, yeah. Just, just to uh, 
be a little different and to give some love. Uh, I'm going to go Donovan Jackson. I feel like he improved a lot this week, and I, I feel like he deserves call. a little love. That's a good yeah. call. You know, give the love to the offensive lineman. Um, but I, I feel like obviously the, the correct answer is Marvin Harrison Jr. Let's be honest. He he was ridiculous this week. Uh, defense. I'll let you go first on this one. <sighs> well, I mean, if you're going to give me the freebie, uh, it's my call. He was incredible. Um, I think you could go a linebacker here, but my call continues to show why he, if you go, I can perk off. Um, my call just has shown that he so is salty. One of the best players in this defensive line that has a lot of talent. Um, and getting all this production from the tackle position is awesome for Ohio state. Um, it's part of the reason why the defense wasn't completely terrible last year because of Haskell Garrett. And he's just come in and upped the production, which we didn't think was, was possible. So shout out to my call. Suncard said Donovan Jackson scored zero touchdowns or, I mean, or did he score 45 points ish. because he was on the field for all of them? It's a good point. It's a good point. Uh, we've seen what happens when Ohio state doesn't have quality guards. All right. Um, defense. I'm, I'm going to go steal chambers here. Um, I, I, I love Tommy Eichenberg. I'm like somebody, um, but yeah, I, I also acknowledge that Steel Chambers is still the, the better linebacker. Like, that's fine. I think Steel Chambers is the best linebacker on the team. That's fine. But <laughs> uh, it doesn't mean Tommy Eichenberg's bad, Austin, but still, uh, Steel Chambers. He's gotten better. Um, and then for my wild card, I'm, I'm just going to go. Mm, I really wish this was last week so I could go with Jesse Mirko because I, I love Jesse Mirko. Um, but mm, I will, I'll say Kate Stover. I, I liked, I, I like, like this play. I like Kate Stover um, as a while. He blocked card. well. Yeah. He, he wasn't necessarily like a big part of the offense, but what he did do and how he did help the team, I'll go Stover. All right. My wild card, I'm going to go with uh, Paris Johnson Jr. because we didn't notice him, which is exactly what you want out of a left tackle. Yes. All right. Um, yeah, I think that's it. That's the end of the show. We're almost at an hour, so that's that's pretty good. Um, Jesse Murko has to be pronounced with an accent. Uh, uh, which card, accent? <laughs> Suncard, when when you have the microphone, you can you can do that. Wait, we have to grade the host. Can't wait for my. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. Sorry, we're out of time. Beat. Oh, gosh, darn. <laughs> uh, that's it. That's the show. Um, check out our highlights on TikTok. Check out our highlights on Instagram and Twitter and uh, inst no, I said Instagram, YouTube uh, shorts dot youtube.com uh you can find our shorts playlist doing that uh of course uh if you only ever listen to the audio version of this we also do a video version of this that you can find at uh youtube.thesloopcast.com and by the way if you only ever watch us on youtube there is an audio version uh which you can find on all of your platform uh all of your podcast platforms of choice uh spotify and apple and uh just probably if, if there's one out there that you use and we're not on it let me know and i'll, I'll probably like fix that for you um <laughs> we have t-shirt stores um 7071 the sloopcast.com for our non-podcast merch if you want something that actually says sloopcast on it then you can go to merch.thesloopcast.com uh, that's all the plugging I feel like doing. Austin, do you want to handle Kyle's corner? Uh, although we did get a discord based assist from Kyle on that. Yeah, we did. Um, I'll just, I'll go ahead and switch it over to Austin's area over here since there's, you know, no, no Kyle's Austin's corner. area. Yeah. You know, um, but no shout out to Kyle's corner. Uh, I will go ahead and do Kyle's first cause it is, is, is his corner. Um, Kyle wants everyone to know that the Queens reign saw six popes, 14 us presidents and 59 starting quarterbacks for the Cleveland Browns, which is kind of hilarious. Um, but also, you know, rest in peace to the queen um, on a Meh. somewhat, I guess, more serious note. Yeah, you know, someone died. It's sad. Yeah. Eh. Um, oh, you know what? I'll say it. I'll say it. 
Go ahead. The British, the British royalty are some of history's greatest monsters. I'll yeah, say it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's true. Yeah. I'll say it. I don't care. Yeah. Um, by the way, also uh, during her reign, she saw half of a Michigan national title. Mm, that feels great and also hurts at the same time for them. Um, <laughs> a, a couple other things, because um, I know Kyle would probably want to cover it. There's only five games left on the Columbus Crew schedule, and they're currently holding on to the last playoff spot. Um, they do have a game in hand, and they're three points ahead of New England. So uh, they ended up drawing two to two on Friday, I think. There was a red card, a lot of drama. Um, so that's that's big. And then also the NFL came back, NFL Sunday, um, as we're recording this, was today. Um, a lot of Buckeye receivers had really good days, um, particularly Michael Thomas, who caught two touchdown passes and the Saints came back and beat the Falcons. So really nice to see the Buckeyes in the NFL um, showing out. So, yeah, I think that is pretty much everything. Speaking of the queen. Mm. Um, she she couldn't help. And we'll talk about this in more detail on Tuesday's episode. She couldn't help but fuck over the Irish one more time. <laughs> <laughs> tell oh, me that God, wasn't the queen's doing warns yeah yeah Only tell me that wasn't the queen's if her, doing if her last name was marshall that would be so much better but i feel like elizabeth marshall is like a royalty name probably uh maybe i just you know i just know i just know what the uh english crown has done to the irish over the years so um, oh, that's so funny yeah you know. all right that's it that's the end of today's show uh, Austin put a band in the uh, and a song in the notes. Uh, this ending music uh, is by Snarls. Uh, the song is called Better Off. You can find a link to that song in the show notes. Uh, those of you listening to the audio version, uh, it might already p- be playing depending upon how long the intro is. It, like it, it just kind of depends upon how long the intro of the song is as far as how much of it gets played under. I It's a thing. It's okay. I've got it. So with all that being Podcasting. said... It's podcasting. Yeah, I I hit the I'm excellent at hitting the post because I do the post in post. And if you know anything about radio lingo, all of that made sense. Um, So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Snarls.